Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, this is going to be a chat about the um, changes to the camera performance of the Nokia Lumia 920 Windows 8 phone after having received the long-awaited Portico update, which is the first significant update for the phone containing fixes from Microsoft and also from Nokia for both the operating system and um, other parts of the phone, such as the camera in this case. Now this photo here is um, not one I'm going to be looking at. I've just put it up here because it looked better than the things that we are going to look at. Now just briefly to um, talk about the update. When the Lumia 920 first came out, of course there's a lot of um, focus on the camera performance and uh, obviously everyone is very impressed with the uh, you know performance in low light um, and then though very quickly people sort of realized that the daylight performance was a bit soft and it's absolutely true the daylight performance is quite soft um, people also very quickly sort of determined that it was probably probably due to the noise reduction in the um, camera or in the, in the processing of the images after they're taken by the camera. Now that is in all likelihood to be true and I just want to demonstrate before we go and look at the actual photos. I've got some photos pre-update and post-update. I didn't have time to take a lot but I just got a couple because I, and I knew what I was interested in. I was only interested in sharpness and so I didn't need to take a whole lot of photos to see what I needed to see. Um, but first I want to show you what it's actually doing, what the noise reduction does and, and why it makes an image soft. Now this here in Photoshop is an image taken on my Lumia 800 a uh, year uh, quite a while ago, year, year and a half ago or so. And that's full frame. I'm just going to find, I've picked this image because it has noise in it, it's got color noise in it. Uh, where's the magnifier? There we go. Um, that's the image full frame. And if we, if you're watching this, you should, um, by the way, go down to the bottom of the screen um, and the YouTube video. Look for the little gear or the little cog icon. Click on it and set it on 720p, which is what this is being recorded at. And then go full screen if you like, using the buttons just to the right. Uh, because what we're looking at is is pretty fine and it's not going to show up in a crummy YouTube vid unless it's at a reasonable quality. Okay, so back to the image. Now this image it was taken in a fairly dim interior just with uh, available light up there, bulb and some window light over there. Um, if we zoom in up to actual pixel size and I go up to... noise, noise is not so noticeable on areas with lots of detail but it very quickly becomes noticeable in low light, especially in areas that are smooth. And so up at the top of the image here, up here, I don't, I'm assuming that we can see this uh, cursor in the image, the Photoshop cursor, but up here around the poster it says, what's the word that superbs the sandwich? Yeah, whatever. Um, you can see all this color noise. Now I'm going to I'm going to enlarge that again. This is now one to one the pixel size. I'm going to enlarge that again just so we can clearly see what we're looking at. Look at all that. Um, now, if it didn't have noise, this would be a smooth color, and the noise is just is caused by the camera winding up the gain on the uh, on the sensor on the image sensor, and it as it winds up the gain to try and try and read the light, read as much light as possible, um, the sensitivity of the pixels becomes uneven. Some become more sensitive than others and you get this unevenness. Um, it's sort of right at the border of the sensitivity of the, um, of the ability of the CCD to actually um, pick up light. And camera manufacturers pretty much have to balance, you know, what image quality they're going to aim for um, versus noise, this sort of thing. And uh, typically in low light, this is what happens. So I'll just bring that back down to actual pixel size here. And this is what a this is what a an image would look like typically. I mean, this is on the Lumia 800, but uh, and I don't know if this has any EXIF information. In fact, 
it probably does. Let me just pull it up. Okay. Lumia 800 f2.2 <clears throat> one fourteenth of a second. And is it not? Is it's not going to give me the ASA? You naughty thing. Oh well, that's a shame. Although, let's see if this um, will give me more information. View options. No. Preview pane, detail pane. No, I think that's really it. Um, maybe Photoshop will give me the information. No. Nope. Crash, bang, wallop. Um, that didn't work. In that case, I haven't got um, bridge on here, so I can't actually tell uh, what the information is. I've got Picasa where I did look up the image earlier on, and if I can find it again quickly... It's not far up here. What's it again? That one. Okay, I'll just find it. Because it's right here. That's the one. Okay. And I'll just see if Picasa, I think, has got EXIF information. Caption because it has little buttons hidden all over the screen, and you've got to search everywhere to find something that's got what you want to know. What's that? No, flip photo. No, display. Sorry about this. Informate hide properties. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, same Lumia 800 normal flash, not used. 14th of a second. That's pretty slow shutter speed. GPS software resolution XY GPS JPEG quality 90% that's interesting it actually gives you that as well but it's not going to give us the ASA or the sensitivity oh well that's a shame I'm surprised it doesn't I would have thought uh, this would be stored with the image in any case um, this typically happens, so sorry for the uh, quick, um, for the short um, divergence from the uh, subject. Now, back to this uh, noise. The amount of noise we're seeing there is pretty typical for a phone. If you have an iPhone, that's what you'll typically see. Um, the iPhone also winds the ASA up to a full 3200 as far as I'm aware, if not more, but I know it goes up to 3200 and the noise becomes very significant in the images. It doesn't matter if you're showing it at this size, it's perfectly smooth, it looks fine. But if you enlarge it, bingo, you can see all the noise. Now, what the Lumia 800 does is this. If we go to Filter, and we go to reduce noise and I'll turn off the preview and I'll put these sort of next to each other so this here in the uh, frame is denoised and this outside is the original and uh, I'm going to whack up the um, strength of this whack up all of these things and here we go well, first we'll reduce color noise maximum Okay, that's reduced some of the grain around here. In particular, it's it's sort of evened out the color, so there's still a bit of a lot of graininess visible, but it's um, not uh, not the rainbow set of rainbow hues that this is. So it's definitely evened out the color. If I then also whack up the strength, okay, nothing grand happens, but I'm going to turn down preserve details there and turn down sharpen details and right there now you can see there's virtually no grain if I zoom in on that when when I move it you can see the grain because that's what uh, Photoshop does but as soon as I let go it's going to apply the uh, effect here so watch this this area here in the middle when I let go plonk gone and I'll back again to hear the text that's off and I could just when I click, the effect is off, and that's the effect on. 
and so it clearly smooths everything out. But it also has the effect of reducing the apparent sharpness. So in this area here, on, yeah, on, off. Well, by on I mean I mean that's off, and that's on. Um, the edges of this box here, of this container, you can see right there under my hand cursor, when I click there, there's more of a corner visible. See? There's more of a corner. When I let go, it sort of softens and becomes quite round. And this text, it's sort of a blur, and then it sharpens up a bit. You can't, still can't read it, of course, it's not that sharp, but um, it sharpens up. Here are these flowers on this tin. That's with the sharpening on. I oh, sorry, this the noise reduction on. That's with it with it off. And so that, and I'll just move this away. And I'm going to use this feature here, the preview, to turn this effect on and off on the whole image over here. So I'll just move this out of the way. And I'll turn it. Uh, I'll just use that little preview box to turn it on and off on this image. So just look at the image. I'll go on and off. Takes a moment to apply. There we go. That's on and so it definitely removes a lot of the noise at the cost of the apparent sharpness now you can't change the actual sharpness unless you actually blur it on purpose uh, this certainly changes the apparent sharpness of the image and uh, smooths it out. Now that is exactly what the 920 is doing with its images, giving you nice noise free uh, images at low light but smeary I call it smeary. It's, it's as if everything's got a bit of Vaseline smeared over it, so it's just all smoothed out. Again, off and on. And just for fun, I wonder if I will increase the size of the of the whole thing here. That's noise reduction on, noise reduction off. Just going on and off. And so it's pretty obvious, isn't it? Um, that's what it's doing, so I'll just cancel out of there, put Photoshop away, and we'll um, have a look at some more images. Now, with the Portico update, uh, because of the complaints about the um, sharpening, about this effect, about the softness of the images in the, on the 920 in daylight, um, Nokia, as always, they listen and have done something about it. So they've all they could do, they can't improve the sharpness of the lens, all they can do is change the processing that happens after the image is taken, and that's exactly what they've done. So I quick, quickly went out, before, as in the whilst my camera was trying to update, I ran out, took some snaps off the balcony, and did before and after. Here we go, and here we go, and uh, we'll just have a look at these closely. That's a uh, full frame. That's the full image, and I'm going to zoom in on something, say here in the background, like right there. Zoom in on that, and I'll do the same on this image here. Now what we've got is pre, this is the old image, and this is the new image. I'll just switch back and forth a little bit now and then. Now where you should look you see in an area like this, that those little slats on that balcony they don't really you don't get more detail but you, they do sharpen up a bit so there's a little bit of sharpening going on and sharpening on a, on a in a, on on an image on a digital image that doesn't mean the focus increases you know there's no there's no extra focus there's no extra detail in the image there's nothing like that sharpening is an effect that happens to the uh, a better way to think of sharpening is edge, contra edge contrast. And uh, if I just hop back to Photoshop here and uh, maybe put this image back to um, da -da 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 -da, zoom to fit screen, okay, go up to a hundred percent actual pixels, and let me zoom around and look for something. Um, maybe just this area here in the middle. Uh, that's probably not the right image to do that with. I'll do it with an image like um, I'll just pick something out of the uh, these images here 
and I'll get something that's very similar. In fact, it's the same shot as the ones we're about to look at here in um, in comparison. So, yep, do that. Okay, so this image, this will show it very well. I'll go up to actual pixels. Now this is a Lumia 920 shot um, when the camera was, when, when this phone was brand new here. Now the thing of interest is this tree line up here. And I'll just zoom in a bit more and it pixelates. Now I'm going bigger than the actual pixels. Um, it starts to get pretty ugly. So, I'll show you what sharpening does. What sharpening does is because you can't increase the actual sharpness of this edge, that's not possible, you can't add detail or, or anything, um, what you do is you use a special effect whereby you increase the contrast, the visible contrast on the edge, and you do that by by darkening the darkening the very edge of the dark side a little bit and lightening the very edge of the light side. So the sky, there'll be a line along here at the bottom of the sky, just as it hits the trees here. That gets made lighter, and the top of the tree line here gets made darker. And it increases the contrast across this edge. So that becomes even lighter, this becomes even darker. That's called edge contrast enhancement, and it's actually, for those who uh, really <laughs> go back in time, um, this is the effect that photographers used to strive for by using, uh, what was it called, agfarodinal. The Where the edge was, where the dark, where there was a lot of emulsion, which was the sky area, that would, if you left the, um, if you didn't shake the, shake the um, development container around a lot, this area would start to use up um, the developing potential of the chemistry and as it used it up, it would then also use up some of the, along the edge here, it would use up the development potential of the chemistry that was sitting on the thin area of the negative, which is this dark area. Um, and it would sort of take it away and draw that chemistry uh, into this dark area. And so that dark area would become darker and the light area here would become lighter we're speaking negatives here, so it's the other way around. And you'd get this increase in contrast on the edge. Now, I hope that wasn't too confusing, but uh, I'll show you what that does um, with a digital darkroom here in Photoshop. So if I go to filter, da -da 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 -da, sharpen. Okay, there's some controls. There we go. And I'll bring this up so it's similar to the image here. I'll reduce that slightly so that we're looking at the same thing approximately. Okay, this on the left is not sharpened, this on the right is being sharpened. And I'm going to increase the radius which um, determines across how many pixels the effect takes place, how many pixels it, it sees as a single unit. And uh, as, as I increase this um, value you can see what's happening you get this white line along the edge of the tree, so that's being lightened, and not so obvious is that it actually gets darker on the tree side. That's what's going on. And if we set this to a uh, normal size, or even smaller, like that, look at that. Now, you can still see that white line along there, and that's, that's sort of the really obvious effect of uh, too much sharpening. But if I take this down to, say, there. Compared with that, compared with that, even this house down there, if you look at that house compared with there, look at that house there, it looks sharp, much sharper. That's much sharper looking than that. That looks quite smeary. And up here in the trees, it looks sharper. Um, but there is no extra information there. All it is is the edge contrast. The contrast between the light and dark areas is increased. And uh, that's what sharpening is. And the more you do it, you actually start to mess up the image because you get the visible effect of that um, sharpening. 
So I'll go all the way up, just go way over the top so you can see really clearly what's going on. That's over sharpened. That's what sharpening does. And this is what a camera does when it um, processes your image. It sharpens things it, um, and it uh, reduces noise. So I hope that was uh, not too confusing. Um, we'll have a look back at these actual images of the pre and post portico update for the Lumia. Now, pre portico, post portico. Pre portico, I'll show you what to look at. Over here, this uh, brick house, and I'm going to enlarge that to 200%. So this is now bigger than one pixel per one pixel on my screen, and I'll do the same here for this one. Okay, and the house has gone over here. Now what sort of becomes obvious, if you look over at this chimney, the rooftop, it's sort of a single block of color. Over here you can see the bricks. You can see the bricks, it's fairly fuzzy. So we'll go and switch to the other image and we'll look at the brickwork here, we'll look at that rooftop, and we'll have a look at this roof here in the front as well. Now I haven't looked at this closely myself, but um, this is a corrugated iron roof. And although I can just see that there is some corrugations here, um, we'll see if that increases on the other shot. So let's have a look post portico now. Okay. Ah, this is this brickwork here is much more obviously angled brickwork. Um, down here, I'm not seeing extra corrugations at all, not at all. And up here, I'm definitely seeing a sharper chimney. There's no extra detail on the roof, but there's definitely a sharper chimney. Look at that chimney there, and look at this brickwork below. Switching back now, I'll just uh, bring it over a little bit so it's somewhere similar. Yep, so that's post portico, pre portico. The whole image sharpens up a little, becomes more grainy. Okay, so that's what it does. It removes some of that Vaseline smeary look. Um, at the same time, whilst it does that, over here on this roof, it's quite noticeable, this green roof. Okay. This is pre-portico, and you can see the corrugations here. Down here, which is the corrugations are very, very close to each other, you can see the roof nails along there. Um, but uh, it's quite smooth in color. There's some texture there, a bit, bit of dark green and so on. Now let's switch over to post-portico. Bang. All of a sudden, it's actually much, well not much, but at this magnification, it's quite, I'm going back and forth. Look at how this gets grainy. Smeary grainy, smear grain. But look how look how much this area, which is quite smooth, becomes quite grainy. See, that's very grainy now, and that's very smooth. You don't see any extra um, corrugations. All you see is more grain, a bit sharper on the grain. And so that's really quite obvious there. That's probably the most obvious bit of this whole thing. And that's what you see. Let's go up to the tree line. Okay, that's got movement in it. This image actually has some movement, so that's not very useful. So does this one. However, it should still be fairly clear. Mm, maybe not so clear that there's edge sharpening. Um, perhaps on the next two images we'll show that a bit better. Um, one thing to note on on this image is the noise up here in the sky. If I go up into the sky in this corner, this is post portico, and you should be able to see quite a bit of um, graininess up here in the sky. Um, in the pre portico image, that's the same corner there. See how smooth it is. Now I'll just switch those back and forth. Grainy, smooth. 
grainy, smooth. So you can see that a lot of the um, sort of um, the the noise, the low noise performance of the of the camera, even though it has a low noise sensor, um, so does the iPhone 5. Um, but the iPhone 5 images are a lot noisier than this, and it's really just down to the Lumia's over um, processing. And now, no doubt, in the dark images and low EV images, it probably still processes the uh, images quite heavily, but in the daylight images, not so much. So that is quite a lot noisier, certainly more comparable to other phones. Okay. Now, the next image here. This is a um, taken from about a meter. No, sorry, these are about a a foot away actually, not, not not far away at all. This is just a bit of junk mail, and uh, what I'm looking at here is actual sharpness. And so if I just click something there, and click the same spot there, this is pre-portico, and this is post-portico. Now what you should look at uh, along these letters here, and I'll just bring that up even more, 200. So now it's 200%. It's much bigger than one pixel per pixel. So these letters here, like that LED, um, it's pretty obvious. There's the paper, the grayish paper, and then there's the ink of the letter. And the tone of the paper just changes when it hits the letter, and it becomes the ink of the uh, letter. But over here on the chart on the uh, post portico update, look what happens. See this? All the letters have a little bit of a halo around them. See that little sort of a white area around all of the letters, or down here around the S's, and very obviously here on these ones here by the sign. Each letter has this kind of halo around it. Well, that's exactly what I just showed you in Photoshop. There it is with the pre, uh, pre portico. You see, absolutely smooth. Really quite perfect, actually no sharpening. That's the point there, is very little or no, very little sharpening. No obvious sharpening. So that's actually a good good image. Um, oh, sorry, but then we go from that to there and we immediately have this kind of sharpening effect. The edge contrast enhancement. So, hmm. I'm uh, in two minds about it. I sort of knew this was going to happen. Um, and not really that fussed. Um, the thing here to notice is the this um, whatever it is security camera. Um, you can see the print. Um, this is the graininess of the print. You know the printed newsprint that this was on, cheap printing. Um, so all that sort of texture. We'll look at that post portico and this green as well. But we'll look at that one in particular. Look at that. That's quite smoothed off and that's quite sharp or apparently sharp it's certainly increased contrast that's what it is increased edge contrast and so and this but this thing here is very obvious too so this line down there where it goes from the white of the paper to the purple this purple is the same tone of purple all the way across until it hits the paper pretty much now when we switch watch what happens what will happen is that as it gets towards the edge at the very edge the purple will darken up all of a sudden, as if you'd drawn a line around it like a cartoon. Okay, here I'll switch now. Look at that. See the dark line going up there? And here the white line on the outside going down. That's the edge contrast increased. So I've sort of um, demonstrated that quite extensively now. Um, should be pretty obvious to everyone what's going on with the um, Portico update. Uh, overall, the, what really matters is when you're using your camera to take photos at what you might call print or postcard size, or you might call it Facebook size. So say this size. For me, this is now this um, image here on screen is about eight inches across. That's quite a large print if I was holding that in my hands. And obviously this screen can't show me what's going on because uh, it's also processing things or not as I'm viewing it but um, the post portico image would look overall a little bit snappier a little bit sharper and 
my images now do look a little bit snappier and sharper. Okay, so it does work. Overall, the images are a little bit grainier, look a little bit sharper as a result. You just got to be aware of the grain. Okay, so I think it's I think it's fine. I think it's good. Um, it sort of brings it more in line with other cameras, other smartphone cameras. Um, what um, I haven't mentioned so far is that the cameras have other flaws. I've noticed these, um, which I think there's two types of flaw that this camera has. One is my camera in particular. It has a problem with sharpness I mentioned in my other videos about the cameras. Uh, and I've also seen another another review mention this issue that some people have, so it's not just me, some people have problems with um, a bad patch on their Lumia sensor. And mine has this problem. And it is up here on the right hand side, so if I just zoom in like that to the post portico and so you can see all this weird sharpening, but it looks all quite sharp and snappy, but if I move over here and just up a little bit, all of a sudden there it looks absolutely terrible. Just there, right there, see that? It looks absolutely terrible. Now notice that it's sharp there where it says comes in USB, and then you get this big smear over here and it becomes very unsharp. Now lenses, all lenses perform you know, well, worse towards the edge of the image, but the telling thing here is that as we move further towards the corner, over here, it sharpens up again. And so it is actually quite reasonable. And so this unsharp area is just in between the two. And I'll uh, zoom out again. So I get this big smeary patch around there, and I see this all the time in my photos and this actually does bug me um, with this camera. A very typical Windows phone and go down to some more recent shots. It doesn't matter in lots of shots but in some shots it's just horrific and uh, I will show you a couple of shots like that. This one here for example I'll just get it to fill the um, fill the frame. Oh, let's look at that EXIF. Let's see what it says. 216 megs. ISO. This has ISO 100, so it's telling us what the ISO is here. It's just the Lumia 800, and it didn't record that. Uh, exposure time: 1 3,663rd of a second. It's a high shutter speed. But these cameras haven't got um, apertures, so f-stops, so they uh, all they can do is increase the shutter speed and wind down the ISO when it gets brighter. So in any case, this is a shot at the beach. Now, I'll just enlarge that up to 100%. Now the thing to look at is that people over here, you know, look okay. Up there, they look okay. Over here, be behind her head, they look fine. Fine over here. People over on the beach look okay. Okay, and now look at that. And even the buildings back here, they sort of look okay. That tree just barely, and then look at this tree here. Absolute disaster. Up there, the trees, it's just fuzz. You can't really see anything in there. And the people in this area, totally fuzzed out. And so these cameras don't perform that well anyway, phone cameras compared with an SLR, but uh, comparing the good area areas of the shot with the area that's got the big fuzz in it, <laughs> you can see how terrible it looks. But then over here, as you go further out, it sort of sharpens up again. You know, as as good as as I can expect for this type of camera. You know, it's not that great, but it's a heck of a lot better than this patch. And so this does that in that particular area all the time. Now I have noticed that it's not 100% consistent. Sometimes, sometimes I'll get this effect all over the image. And case in point, I'll open another tab of that thing, close that, open these um, portico 
images. Now one of these. It's finding the one it is. I'll bring that back into the uh, screen here. Yes, this one here, taken at the same time as the others, has got some very strange sharpness going on, so I'll just reduce that to about 75%. What happens here is that we've got, here's a good point, you can see this pretty sharp text here, real LED that adds to the, and the text up there is perfectly sharp. That looks just like the other photos. And then down here, there's this strange smear through it right there. And then over here, it's sharp again, right? And then down here, it's all fuzzy again. And this happens throughout, so there's good sharpness over here on the left. There's a sharp bit there, and there's a, it's like a sharp bit going all the way down these, these numbers, but then just up here, it's incredibly fuzzy. And just up here, it's incredibly fuzzy. But then down here, it's sort of sharp again, almost in a radial manner. Um, and this effect occurs over the whole thing, um, except in that one area where I always get a smear, it's still always smeared. So it's nice and sharp up here where it says comes in USB, and then there's this big blurry bit, and then out here it's sharp again. Um, that is a fault. This other issue here where it sort of goes on and off and becomes sharp and unsharp, I don't know what's doing that, but I suspect it's something to do with the optical image stabilization. Um, I don't know, like it's moving, or something's jiggling, or the elements are jiggling around, or something. There's something going on there that's causing this. Um, and it's really weird. And it doesn't happen often, but it does happen. I've I've seen it. I've seen it. Noticed it in images there that aren't of something like this, where I can show it very clearly. Um, and then I take the same photo again a, f a few seconds later, and it's like that one or that one, perfectly sharp, apart from the smeary area. Um, now this may all sound quite terrible, <laughs> but um, I, I'm not really that fussed about this. Um, Again, I only use the images at this size because anything bigger is just not they're just not up to scratch um and no no camera phone is uh even even the people who go on about the uh, nokia what is it the eight o eight the forty one megapixel one that still has flaws like this. You get more pixels, you get a lot more pixels, which is nice, but none of what I'm talking about here is to, is to do with pixels. This is all optical performance that's what this is this isn't pixels. Um, pixels would, uh, would come into it if we start enlarging like that. Uh, Internet Explorer actually smooths things out as you increase the size so we can't see it. Um, but we can certainly see the relative optical performance from one area to the other. Uh, and that's all we're talking about here. And so none of these cameras are really up to scratch um, compared with a real camera. But uh, Facebook size photos, postcard size prints, they're great. I think they're perfectly good. Um, this particular issue, I wondered whether I should uh, take my phone back. I, not, I don't want to risk losing it for six weeks like I did when I took my Lumia 800 back uh, when I was forced to send it back with a, with a faulty earpiece. Um, and so I lost the phone for nearly six weeks while they waited and replaced the faulty earpiece. Not, that's not an earpiece that's inside the phone. That's, one, that's the um, one that you plug in little one. They, f they actually force you to send your phone in when that's broken. So uh, I don't want to risk losing the phone for six weeks. Um, you know, I only have it for a year. That's uh, quite a l significant amount of that time. And um, so I have considered going on to eBay, because I noticed that on eBay you can actually buy a Lumia 800 camera. I just saw this the other day. It's come up. Sorry, Lumia 920 uh, camera part, something like that. Bit of a tangent here again, but there we go. Look at that. 
Ooh, that's expensive. This was on here for about 40 bucks US the other day. And that was affordable, I thought. I wouldn't mind just buying one in and replacing it because this contains the um, the whole thing, the lens and all. It's all in there. It replaces the whole camera. So that would be, um, <laughs> you know, I'd just take a chance, take a punt on the idea that that one might be better than the um, one I've got in my phone. There's another one, 57 bucks. Yeah, there we go. It's from the UK as well. Um, so there are parts, you know. See, it's half that price. I don't know why. Shipping two pounds. Um, but yeah, for that amount of money, I thought I could just risk it and just maybe replace the camera. I'll see if I do that. If I do, obviously there'll be a video about it. So, I think that concludes the camera um, aspect of the Portico update. Obviously, it's worth it overall. The phone is better overall because of it. I'm going to do a separate video going into other aspects of the update, plus some general chat about the um, phone since my marathon review, which you can find in my on my channel. Um, there's just so much more to say, and uh, I'm prepared to sit around and say it in another long video. So, now, can I stop myself from talking? Um, yes, thank you for watching. Hope this was of some interest. Please subscribe if you want to see more. Give me a like, especially. Um, it's nice to see likes because, you know, you can get thousands of views and then 10 likes. And I sort of think, well, you know, do people really want to see this or not? Um, so it's really nice to know if people like it. And so uh, that's just one of the buttons below. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.